Okay, in this video I'm going to continue on with my tutorials on electrostatics. This is video number 31 and I'm going to discuss the energy stored in a capacitor, specifically a parallel plate capacitor. There are many videos previous to this which are relevant in one form or another and I've listed most of them on the left hand side of your screen. So on the top right of your screen I've drawn a schematic of a parallel plate capacitor. So this is essentially two parallel pieces of metal or two parallel conductors separated by usually a small distance and I'm going to give them an area capital A and they have an equal but opposite amount of charge on each of them plus Q and minus Q. And they're separated by a distance D. So we know of course that the I suppose change of potential delta V or the potential between two points is minus the integral of E dot DL. So if I want to calculate the potential of our capacitor in this case it's going to be minus and the boundary conditions will be the uh, we'll say the minus plate and the positive plate E dot DL. And we know of course that the electric field is 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 the volume integral of the surface charge density the separation unit vector and divide that by the magnitude of the separation vector to be squared. And finally of course the total charge is the volume integral of the volume charge density. So where do we go from here? So capacitors are very useful and it's interesting to see how little actual electrostatics or electromagnetism is required in order to get the more important or useful formula out, out of it. So first of all we know that the electric field is proportional to the charge. If you wonder where that comes from just look at the equation for Coulomb's law. Electric field is proportional to the charge because of this integral here. All right. So we know the electric field is proportional to the charge. Similarly, we know the electric field is proportional to the potential. That's a pretty straightforward thing. What this means is that the electric potential is proportional to the charge. We call the constant of proportionality the capacitance. The conventional way to write this is capital C, so V times C is equal to Q. We measure capacitance in farads. So if you look at the electric field of a parallel plate capacitor, like we have in the bottom left of your screen, so you have two plates, <laughs> drawn poorly as normal, uh, in green, a positive plate and a negative plate, and are defined three areas, one, two, and three. Areas one and three are outside the capacitor, but area two is between the capacitor plates. So I've drawn another representation of the same thing here, where the two vertical black lines, as you look at the plates, and we have regions one to three as normal. And I've drawn in the electric field, so if you look at the left uh, vertical black line, which is our positive plate, we know that the electric field here is extending away from it. That's the positive electric field. And we know that it also continues. So it continues out, and we have it here as well. This should be positive there, like that. All right. Now if you look at the negative plate, we know the electric field approaches it here and here, but it also approaches it, of course, on this side of the uh, positive plate. So if we look inside the capacitor, so in region 2, we see that the electric field E plus and E minus are in fact going in the same direction, whereas in regions 1 and 3, they are not. So this means is that the electric fields superpose, and we get the electric field of our capacitor. And it's going to be twice sigma over twice epsilon 0 n hat. Because as we've seen in a previous video, and I think it is video number 14, that the capacitance of an infinite plane is sigma over twice, excuse me, the electric field of an infinite plane is sigma over twice epsilon zero. We have twice that. So for a parallel plate capacitor, the charge will be uniform where the surface area is large and the plate separation, which I called D, is small. So we know that the surface charge density is capital Q over A. And I don't know why I have the I don't know why I have the written here, but let's get rid of that for the moment. So the magnitude of the electric field inside our capacitor is going to be twice sigma over twice epsilon zero, which is going to be capital Q over epsilon zero times the area. What this means is that our potential, we know of course, is minus E dot dl, and that's going to be Q over epsilon zero A, the integral of dl. But what we're integrating here, in, if we're, when we're talking about dl, is just the capacitor. We'll say the distance between the capacitor plates which of course is just going to give us the separation D. So in actual fact what we have is the potential 
of a parallel plate capacitor is epsilon zero, excuse me, is going to be Q times D over A times epsilon zero. And we define the capacitance as epsilon zero A over D. Because we know that the capacitance is the uh, constant of proportionality between the electric potential and the charge, as we have in this equation up here. Finally then, if you would like to charge a capacitor, we of course need to do work. Because what needs to happen is, we need to bring positive charge to one plate and negative charge to the other plate. So if you can imagine we have two plates, I'm going to just color them in like this, these are our two plates. Usually what happens is we connect them up to a battery. And the, the battery provides our um, chemical potential energy, which we convert to, to electric potential energy. And we coat the, uh, we coat the uh, plates with positive charge on one and negative charge on the other. So what work must be done in order to do this? Well, we know that the work done to assemble a group of charges was covered in video 28. The more, most important equation there was that the was that the work done was equal to one half outside of the integral of the surface or the volume charge density multiplied by the electric potential integrated d tau. So we have here that the potential is equal to the charge divided by the capacitance. We can rearrange this to say that it's equal to work done divided by the uh, the charge. So W is equal to Q times the potential. DW is equal to V times DQ. So that's just a theorem from partial derivatives, which I've covered in many other videos. I'm not going to do it again. So we can sub in for our chem our not our chemical potential, but our um our our potential here. So we get V, which becomes Q over C, and we multiply that by DQ, of course. Integrating the lot of this, we get that the work done is equal to Q squared over twice C. Or Another way we can re rewrite this is the work done is one half C V squared. Okay, so that's all I've got to say about that. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends. Subscribe to my channel, and you might also give me a comment in the.